We are all basically water. The average human is between 55 and 60 percent water. At birth, human babies are even wetter. Being 75 percent water, they are swimmingly similar to fish. So if over half of us is made of water, the question we have is, why is water not the top priority when it comes to our daily lives, our long-term wellness, and our health? From an indigenous perspective, water is everything. When was the last time you had a corridor to water? You know, it sounds bizarre, right? You've got to go to the water. If you want to solve the problem, you've got to go talk to the water, and the water will show you. It will, it will guide you. It will tell you. You'll feel it. You'll feel its presence. That was a snippet from our podcast featuring Troy Brockbank. Over to you, Troy. So I'm a civil engineer, a water engineer by trade. When it comes to understanding water, we feel lucky to have Troy on our side. But we still couldn't help feeling that our Curious Minds podcast question of fixing our poop problem here in Otara was playing a bigger problem for our locals than just having a polluted waterway. Let's go back a bit to fill you in on our mahi so far. Hi everyone, welcome to the Curious Minds Podcast. This is a podcast where we take a problem. In our case, it's the poop problem here in Otar. That's right, when it rains, it floods poo. So our team designed an AI-driven self-flying drone called the Flying Tanifa. To take photos of poop in the water when it rains. So we can own our data to show our lawmakers to lobby for change. We don't think it's good enough that our local waterways are becoming too polluted to swim in. So this podcast is about finding small solutions to big problems by having conversations with influential people. So let's get back to the story. What happens every time it rains is that the poo goes bubble, 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 comes out of the pipes and into the creek. This is Judy Spate, a local legend here in Otara. We wanted to do something that might make a difference to use the corporate skills that we had to work to serve communities. And 20 years later, we're still true to those things. Um, don't want to be doing something that means nothing. Don't want to be doing something that um, just wastes time. So what were you saying again about our poo problem, Judy? The poo goes bubble, 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 comes out of the pipes and into the creek. It's just not, you know, that's not safe. So you can imagine what happens when it gets into the creek. As we all know, um, you know, it kills the fish. It kills um, even the tiny little things that are just this big in the creek, the macro invertebrates. And it makes it unsafe to swim. So if you talk to someone born here, when they were kids, they would be swimming in the creek. My mother always used to take us because she couldn't afford us to do anything in terms of activity, but we used to walk around the back of the creek. This is Nita Rupata Riki, who has been in Otara for over 60 years and remembers swimming in the local creek before it became polluted. So everybody swam in the creek. Um, that would have been during the 60s. Yeah. People would be swimming in the, in the tidal when it was deep and you'd get, be seeing people who were bringing their nets in from oh. Mala, catching Mala. Contrast that to today... It is the poo problem and it's horrible. So yeah, let's talk about the poo problem. Can you tell us exactly what gets like affected by the poo problem? The poo problem starts because the pipes are too small. And some of them are broken. Those are the pipes that are connected to wastewater, which is a nice way of saying poo. So the pipes that, that are connected to our toilets and our washing machines and our baths and our hand basins... Um, they're too small for the number of houses we've got here. The problem is with a lot of these pollution events in, the, in our fresh waterways. Meet Bruce Kendall, another awesome guest on our Curious Minds podcast. Bruce is an Olympic gold medalist. Is they happen really fast. There's no warning that it's going to come. And uh, goes through, kills everything. And then once it's happened, there's no smoking gun. You can't actually tell where it came from because it's it's flushed through. Did we mention that Bruce was a gold medalist? Wow, how cool is that? So where to from here? We know we have a problem, but what's the solution? I think what I challenge you is to think upstream. This is our awesome friend, Meredith Dale. Meredith is an urban designer. Urban design is about the um, sort of like somewhere in between architecture and planning, and we think about how to make places that work for people. 
Meredith challenged us to think further upstream. You know, like we're all contributing to this, whether we intentionally do or not, you know, like the shops where you buy the things you need, they're contributing to the wastewater and the stormwater and yeah, look upstream. Yeah. So that's what we've been doing here at Accelerating Aotearoa, getting upstream, testing our waterways, educating the next generation on what can be done today so we don't miss out on tomorrow. You know, in the waterway itself, in the state of Waimati, all this, um, the state of water where it's got it's got more potential to kill living things than to enhance living things. If you can't touch it, you can't you can't really fully connect to it. We can always talk to water, we can always listen to water, but we really got to make that that next step, that difference. So as our journey continues to lobby for change, we want to ask you: What difference are you going to make? To cleaning our waterways. Let us know. Or better, be a guest on our podcast, The Curious Minds Podcast.